Hey, what's up, guys? We're back again with the best Barbarians Evolution deck in Clash Royale. After cycling just one set of regular Barbarians, the next ones will be Evolved, which gives substantially higher stats with a 9% damage increase and 30% higher health, which means they'll never die to Fireball. But the most overpowered aspect of their evolution is the 50% speed boost that they get for each attack that they do. And the buff stacks ridiculously quickly, allowing you to melt golems and big beatdown pushes. They're basically Ebarb's Rage, but for three less elixir. And the rank two player in the world is using this evolved Barbarian's deck to destroy all the Firecracker and Royal Giant evolutions. When you've got Inferno Tower, Mighty Miner, Evolved Barbarians, and Freeze, your defense is going to be the best in the game. And Freeze pairs perfectly with Evolved Barbarians, holding your opponent's units down like punching bags, allowing your barbs to reach maximum levels of speed. If you don't have Mighty Miner, use Knight. It's time to unlock our overpowered stats and assert dominance. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you never miss out on any of the daily videos. Lots of love to everyone that's using Credit Code Sertai to support the channel. So we're playing against an extreme cat that finished 838 in the world. So if this guy's going to be a top ladder player, you guys know the deal. We are not going to be treating him any differently with our barbarians. We're going to eat all of his cards alive and force out a bunch of elixir. So I'm thinking that I want to go in for a freeze here, but I also want to activate King Tower against the Firecracker. So I guess I'm going to activate King Tower against the Firecracker as first order of business. We're gonna go and drop our Mighty Miner here, and then activate King Tower, and then I wonder if we have to do anything else on the Firecracker. It shouldn't do that much damage to me. The bad thing about this is the fact that the Mighty Miner is gonna force out a Nice Swisher. Man, that Firecracker stayed alive for a century. What the heck? So generally, when you're running a deck like ours, you want to wait till later stages of the game before you rattle off a Graveyard Freeze. In Single Elixir, you're not gonna be successful because your opponent's gonna have an abundance of bait cards, and because they have so many bait cards, and you go for a Graveyard, you're gonna have to drop arrows as well. That's already 8 Elixir, and that's not even including the Freeze or the tank that you drop with it. If I'm dropping a Freeze, that's going to be at least 12 Elixir. It's just going to be too much for me. And you're not going to be able to afford that and defend at the same time, so that's generally why we're waiting around so long. I'm going to split up our Barbarians and see if I can go in for a Graveyard, depending on what he decides to do, if he overcommits like a crazy person. But notice how the Barbarians get raged up after they attack, and then they essentially are built in Elite Barbarian's Rage without spending the Elixir of Ebarbs or Rage. So, I wonder if I go in for a freeze here on the left with one Barbarian. How fast can it start attacking? What is that thing going to do? Oh my goodness. It's a monster. We've got Ebarb's Rage built in, baby. You'll love to see it. So, I'm just going to eat that damage. It's okay. It's all calculated out here, guys. It's all calculated. Because I know that I'll do more damage than him if I can go in for a graveyard. And then I can go in for like an arrows on his like goblins or whatever else he decides to do. I bet you he has to go goblins and firecracker isn't going to be enough. So, he probably loses his entire tower. The top 800 player in the world thought that minor wall breakers would finesse me, but in the end, he got absolutely destroyed. So, we're not going to take out the entire tower. I probably should have timed my Mighty Miner ability a little bit better, but maybe it's a blessing in disguise. Because I haven't taken the other tower yet. Now the King Tower won't be shooting at me if I decide to go and take the right hand tower. Oh, it was Big Brain, guys! I thought it was Small Brain all along, and I, I think we've evolved. Our brain has evolved just like our barbarians. So we're going to go and split up our Skeleton Dragons here, and we're just going to drop Inferno Towers on defense since it's the safest bet. Now I'm going to go for Barbarians here to make sure he can't do anything like crazy on us. And we can go in for Arrows on top of the Firecracker. We know that he's not super scary because we <laughs> are pretty comfortable with our Inferno Tower melting the rest of his stuff. And we can slowly but surely go and cycle more units on our right-hand side. He's defending the left like he's just like, yo, you definitely can't finish me off. Oh my gosh, is the Barbarian going to do it? He even spent Elixir, and I didn't even have to Spell Cycle, and we still clapped him. I'm going to go Barbarians in the middle, and we'll see if we can go in for the Barbarians Freeze play and take a second tower. Give me everything. We are not going to come away with this with just one tower. We want it all, baby. Come on. Barbarians are on his doorstep, ready to pound down his house, but time ran out. It's ridiculous to match into players that finish top 800 in the world and still stomp them so easily. I guess if all Barbarians just give us too much power. And our Evolved Barbarians have pushed us up to 3,600 in the world. All right, we got another game here. So first things first, we're just going to wait, chill, and see what this guy's up to. I mean, I guess we can go for a Mighty Miner in the back. I love going for the Barbarians plus Freeze on offense and single elixir when my opponents aren't expecting it. And by Barbarians, I mean the Evolved Barbarians. I think that this guy's likely going to end up having like a Lava Hound deck because we see Tombstone. But then we see Archers, so I don't know. He might not be running it anymore. Okay, Fireball comes through. That's annoying. I'm going to go for arrows so we can obliterate all the skeletons, ideally. Oh, wow, we missed some of them. That's not good, and he's laughing at me. Well, I guess he's not laughing at me. He's giving me the cry face. He's letting me know that I'm awful at Clash Corral. 
Okay, yeah, there it is. Kind of what we expected, right? We knew he was going to probably end up having Lava Hound after we saw the Tombstone. I'm going to go in for an aggressive play of Barbarians, plus also the Graveyard on the right-hand side. And I'm going to ignore the entirety of the Skeleton Dragons. I don't know if this guy's going to be ready for our spam. Especially if I can go for Skeleton Dragons without him ending up having Fireball and Cycle. Oh, wait, his tower's at 87 health. Again, massive value for me. I want to pop the Lava Hound and then potentially Freeze or Ice Wizard. I think Freeze is going to be the cheese play. I think Freeze is going to be definitely better for us. We want to be able to stop the Balloon from taking out my tower. We also want to hold all the Lava Pups in place. Let's go, guys! That's what I'm talking about! And now I think he's crying for a different reason. He was likely crying at the start because he thought he had an advantageous position, and now he's like, nope, crying out of just desperation at this point. I'm going to go and click the ability to go and blast those two bits, and then he's not going to respond to that, right? He's just going to let me take tower. So we finished off his archers, and we're also keeping our Mighty Miner alive. You know what? I could go Barbarians on offense. I don't know if this is a good decision. I, I have no idea. <laughs> you know what? Let's Inferno Tower early on so we can go and melt the Phoenix, and then after we crush the Phoenix, we can go in for arrows as well. Solid stuff. It literally locked under the Lava Hound first. That is the best thing that could have happened for me. Oh my goodness. I want to three crown this guy. I, I wasn't able to accomplish it in the last game when we were playing against the top 800 player, but I truly believe that we got this one on lock. So I'm going to go in for the Mighty Miner. I'm going to go and drop the ability. I'm going to blast everything in bits. And then I'm going to go and drop the Mighty Miner graveyard on the right hand side, utilizing our barbarians as well. He's yawning. Does he think this is easy for him? There's no way, bro. There's no shot this is going to be an easy defense for you. You think I'm going to Mighty Miner and Swerve and go to the other tower? No, nah, man. I'm going straight towards the three crowd. <laughs> Let's go. Look at my Barbarians. They literally melted his stuff so freaking fast. And then I can go for arrows here as well. Drop the Mighty Miner ability and three crown him. There's nothing he can do. <laughs> I love the fact that the guy was yawning and thinking the game would be like, oh, I got this. I'm back in the game. And then he got shut down so fast, even thinking that he could go and stop my Mighty Miner. And I was just going straight for the three crown and he had no clue what we were doing. And we're steadily securing higher ranks at 3,100 in the world. So now we're playing against someone that finished top 311 in the world. He's already dropping a good luck. I'll probably need it a little bit. Anyone that's from the Cal clan is always a professional player. So a little bit scared right now that this guy plays the game 24-7, 365. And I'm just a measly content creator out here, bruh. I'm going to go for Barbarians on the left-hand side. We play against another Lava Hound just because everyone's so scared of the Firecracker Evolution. So they're either playing Royal Giant or they're playing cards to go and counter the Firecracker Evolution because the Firecracker Evolution is absolutely everywhere. All right, so, hmm. Can we Inferno on the Inferno Dragon? That might not be a bad decision. Hypothetically, if we Inferno Tower here and it locks onto the Inferno Dragon, that's pretty good. And then we can go in for a Skeleton Dragon so that he can't finish off our Inferno Tower and we can keep everything alive a little bit longer. The only issue is if he goes balloon in the left-hand side because I just exhausted my Skeleton Dragons. And the Inferno Tower, it's going to keep the right-hand side alive. And obviously, he can't go for like a mine or anything unless it's in the very far back. But if he plans an attack and he sets things up in the back, it doesn't look like my Inferno Tower is going to stay alive much longer. It's going to expire. It's not going to give me the strength that I need. But we've got the Barbarians. Let's go. Wait, never mind. The Inferno Dragon's still trying to piece apart the guards. I don't know. It was helpful for a bit. So, how are these going to work on offense? Do we graveyard? Do we go in for a freeze? I think we go in for a graveyard freeze if we can, because if the barbarians are able to put in more work and just keep getting annoyed and aggravated and raged up, and they lock onto the tower, how much strength can they get? There's only one barbarian left, but that's all we needed. That's awesome stuff. All right, we can go for skeleton dragons or we can go for arrows. I think going in for arrows is going to be slightly better to finish off the inferno dragon and damage down the skeleton dragon. Costs less elixir, and it also allows me to keep my dragons in my hand so we don't get dragged bound by some random balloon that he's going to drop. Okay, so speaking of balloons, I think skeleton dragons are going to be better against guards as well, so we'll, we'll do that. Guards are going to do a lot of damage. I should have dropped the skeleton dragons considerably quicker than that. All right, guards are out of cycle, though, and that's his best answer to the graveyard, so I wonder what he's going to do. We're back to freeze, we're back to mighty miner, and I think we can do whatever we please. So I'm going to go in for a freeze right now, and if the Mighty Miner can stay alive and it just, like, does its thing and does its little pop, oh, it doesn't allow us to get the pop off. But the Skeleton Dragons are going to splash for once in their lives. We will show it again through the magic of the instant replay. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I'm pretty confident that that was the only time I've ever seen a Skeleton Dragon splash onto a tower before. Most of the time, it just splashes onto your unit right next to the tower. But my Skeleton Dragons are built different today. They want me to win against this player. Okay, I'm going to go in for a graveyard, and we still have a Skeleton Dragon left over. I'm telling you, these Skeleton Dragons want me to win. <laughs> I'm going to go arrows, and we do snag the tower. 
So all I need to do is defend this. And I can go for a Mighty Miner right now. His Skeleton Dragon is going to lose to mine. My Skeleton Dragon is freaking immortal at this moment. <laughs> no way! We win! I just beat a 300 player in the world that was running Lava Hound. And we are crushing the meta with this deck. We're the king of his clan because we just slayed someone significantly better than me. Our barbarian swords have shot us up the ranks to 2,600 in the world. Jumping to the game against Alex's average, you guys talk very clearly in his banner that he's not an average player. He's got a rank 300 and 400 finish in the world, and he's trying to hide behind that and saying that he's average. I don't appreciate that. No shenanigans, no trickery out here, bro. So we're going to split up our barbarians, and this guy's going to split up his e-barbs. He was trying to copy my tactics for a little bit, but now he can't. Okay, can we arrows both of them? Nah, no, we only hit one. That's incredibly disappointing. I should have hit the tower there as well then. So what are we going to do? Hmm, I think I can just go Mighty Miner in the middle. The pull radius of his barbs are very far. And I bet you he's got a Golem deck. There's no doubt in my mind we're playing against Golem. He's going to have Golem Electro Dragon most likely. So I want to go for a Graveyard and spice it up a little bit. Maybe even go and click the Mighty Miner and go to the other side. Or we can freeze with the Mighty Miner as well. I think that's better to freeze with the Mighty Miner. We'll force out a bit more Elixir anyway. Nice. Solid stuff. And we don't have to spend the Elixir to go and push our Mighty Miner to the other side. So... We see that our opponent is going to end up having Electro Dragon with Golem. So the way that I like to play this is I don't want to go in for my Ice Wizard too early. I want to drop it a little bit later to activate King Tower because the Electro Dragon will get more than one shot. So on the second shot, we'll go and drop our Ice Wizard. So then the Ice Wizard will take less damage. If we drop it earlier, it would get chained onto twice by his Electro Dragon. And I don't want that to happen. But here's what we're really looking for. Will this work or is this going to be an absolute catastrophic failure? If we go for our Barbarians right now, we go for a Graveyard with it, is this going to do stuff? Can our Barbarians melt the Golem? <laughs> this is a joke. His Golem didn't even reach my side of the map, and it got shredded by Barbs. This is, this is awesome. I am truly a fan of the Barbarian's evolution. What can I say? This is working out wonderfully for me. I'm going to go and blast this stuff back with our Mighty Miner Bomb, and then I think we can go in for a Freeze if we need to, just to minimize all of his damage. I was hoping he would go for a tornado so he would go and pull our skeleton dragons closer or something, but that didn't work out. So with 40 seconds left in the match, we've got Ice Wizard, Inferno Dragon, Mighty Miner, and Freeze. There is literally 0% chance of him winning. A few dominance is asserted later. By far one of the most fun and funny matchups I've had in a minute. I do not expect any way of Golem or Electro Giants or any beatdown decks to break through our deck. It's impossible for them to penetrate our defenses. Full turtle for the win, and it's satisfying crushing the big beatdown decks even when they're piloted by professional or top tier players. And we're continuing the climb at top 2,300 in the world. I can see how this deck pushed to number two in the world. It is beyond busted. The guy's gonna go for a fire spirit, so it's definitely gonna be a fast cycle deck. Maybe it's gonna be piggies with rail hogs and archer queen? I don't know. We'll see if he's gonna be running that. So I wanna go in for a mighty miner in the back. Yeah, see, after I saw fire spirit, I immediately identified the deck. Whenever I play this matchup, it's imperative that we save our aggressive barbarians for his hogs. Because that's going to be our best way of countering it. Since the Inferno Tower, yeah, it can kill the piggies, but it's just going to get earthquaked and it's not going to be a good trade for us. Going to go and click the uh, ability to go to the other side. Maybe we're able to marvelously generate a decent defense against that Archer Queen. Solid stuff. So go for the piggy counter of the barbarians every time because you cycle your evolution and you get that on the field as fast as you can. It's going to have poison. No, dude, come on. Can we talk about this for a sec? Every time I play this matchup, we always match it as someone that has Earthquake, and this is the one outlier. One person I didn't want to play against. We're gonna go in for a Graveyard and Single Elixir and break our rule because we need to be able to get damage when the poison's out of cycle. Otherwise, you're just gonna poison on defense every single time. Look at the damage we got, though. We're kind of not really in a great spot, but we're working with what we got. We're down 600 right now, and we need to make a comeback against Nexon. The good thing about our deck is it takes literally zero skill, zero thought power. Your brain cells will decompose if you play this deck, probably, most likely. <laughs> so we don't have to play that well. We just need to not make any slip ups and we'll probably win the game. So I'm going to go in for a Mighty Miner on the same side as the Archer Queen just to make sure that we're going to be able to go and pop the ability when he pops the ability so then we can blast his units back. Then I'm going to go for Barbarians and watch as they rage themselves up. Is he going to get any piggy damage? His piggies are getting blocked. <laughs> Yo, that's awesome. <laughs> That's so satisfying. And they're so big, too. The barbarians are bustling through. Yo, that queen can't handle them right now. We're going to go in for a graveyard, and we definitely want to arrows on his goblins. Ideally, they walk up in vicinity. Yes, I got so greedy because I wanted to hit the cannon there as well, and I hit everything. Wait, can I freeze? Please give me the freeze. And the one skeleton. Imagine if that was an evolved skeleton that just wallowed around the entire arena. <laughs> 
this game's already won. It's ridiculous. We're winning every game we play. And honestly, we're just going to cut to the end again because all we have to do is Herp Derp, drop our Inferno Tower, Herp Derp, drop our Barbarians, and there's nothing he can do to break through. And it seems like our Sir even realized that and just immediately gave up. I've never seen so many easy wins with a deck that takes this amount of skill. If you guys want the lowest skill evolution, it's not Royal Giant, it's not Firecracker, it's actually Evolved Barbarians. These things are ridiculously underappreciated and super no skill. After annihilating every top ladder player that we matched into, we have rushed our way up the ranks to 2,100 in the world. Speedily destroying all the top players at this rank should not be this easy. But Evolved Barbarians slash through everything. I'll do anything, I'll do whatever it takes to... Like, subscribe for more daily videos, and have an amazing rest of your day. Oh,